Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Come on. Oh, we're live. We're now live. We're, live. we're on. Hello. Hello, we're Hello. on. Can you can you hear us and see us? Let's see. Hello, David and Johnny and Gregory. Alan. Do you guys do you guys see us and hear us? Or are we talking to ourselves? <laughs> oh my god. Yes. yes. Okay, good. Awesome. Confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hello everybody. It's really nice to see you. Welcome to Malta. Welcome to Polyseal's Cockpit, where <laughs> we are sitting today because it is extremely hot. It is very hot here. It's probably 33 degrees Celsius, so I don't know, getting close to 100 and very high humidity. Yes. So we're sitting in the cockpit of Polar Seal that is completely covered with firework debris because the Maltese love their celebrations of everything and uh, the fireworks barge is about 800 meters that way. Oh my god yes my, my head still hurts from all the explosion that has been going on day and night for the last 48 hours but uh, it's super nice to see you oh my god there are so many people hello Sayulis <laughs> and uh, and Skipper Moorman and Jules and, uh, and Larry and Tom oh Hi guys. All right. So today we are live to talk about our Atlantic crossing and all of our preparations. Uh, we figured that, you know, since we told you guys that we were going to cross the Atlantic, we've had a, a lot of reactions. A lot of opinions, both good and bad. <laughs> we received a lot of emails, uh, a, a lot of them very supportive, a lot of them expressing a little bit of uh, disappointment. Uh, we also had a lot of uh, questions, uh, so we figured that today we're going to answer them all. And uh, for the first 10 minutes, we're going to talk a little bit about our plan, about our route, about our preparations, and then we can just hang out and answer questions, questions if you yeah. have any questions. We have Brian here, but it looks like I'm sitting in a jungle, so I'm just going <laughs> to move him to the side a little bit. Yes, we didn't want to leave Brian alone uh, down in the cabin because it's really hot. Well, anyways. Uh, First off, we wanted to address uh, all the emails that we've received with a lot of questions and a little bit of uh, disappointment. Uh, we've explained the reasons behind our choice yeah. uh, in videos, in other blog posts, and in our newsletter. So I don't, I mean, I don't think that we should talk about. I think Why? the biggest thing is like we we have gone back and thought through our decision a number of times and have asked ourselves like well are we doing the right thing maybe we should go to greece maybe we should go to turkey i don't know there's benefits in both and we've asked ourselves that a few times we haven't changed our mind yes but we definitely have, have asked and i think that leads to a question that uh well not a question but a statement that sophie uh made last night i think that was really good about sailing which was yeah, like when you when you sail the way that we do, you can't really have FOMO because and it, what's FOMO? And it, yeah, I, I, maybe maybe not everybody is clear on what <laughs> FOMO is. Fear of missing out because uh, you want you we can't go everywhere. We can't visit yeah. all the places that we want to visit because nature dictates what it is that we can see or not and not see what it is that we can experience and not experience. Yeah. So we figure that for now. It's better for us to continue our adventure in the Caribbean. We are really excited about crossing the Atlantic. And as our friend Jewel says, if we feel that we want to scratch the Mediterranean each again, we can always come back. <laughs> that's true. We can always come back. So that's a little bit of the there. Yes. Um, moving on. <laughs> moving on. We've had a few questions about what a route is and a few people concerned that we were going to cross now. Uh, in the midst of hurricane season, which is not the case. We, as we just said, we are in Malta. Yes. So we actually have a long ways to go. It's uh, 900 nautical miles from here back to where we wintered last year in Almiramar, Spain. So our plan is in about a week or so, once the winds get good, we're going to start heading back to Almiramar and we're going to make that our first long passage. Yes. It will be anywhere from five to seven days. Yes. And the reason that we decided to do it that way is we've done passages up to almost three days. Two nights is the longest. Miss but, it was intense. But doing it this way allows us to get the experience of a long passage, but also have 
the 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 freedom to bail out if we need to where yes. you can't bail out in the ocean so if if something's going wrong or we don't like something we can head to sicily or sardinia or even the balearics if stuff got really bad we could go to north africa um uh, and then and then to spain so we're using it as an opportunity to gain experience, experience. on longer passages now i see here a Hendrix say it's a bad time of the year to be heading into the caribbean and that's absolutely right and that's not what we're going to try to do and i think that we should talk a little bit about timing because that's one question that we get a lot we're like guys are you aware of hurricane season <laughs> um essentially we made our decision in july because um we need time to prepare uh the atlantic crossing it's not something that we're going to do at once uh, our boat needs uh some preparation which we're going to talk about in a few minutes uh, but we needed that time to make our way from the Mediterranean back to Gibraltar, and then we're going to go be, uh, either Madeira or Morocco, we're going to go to the Canary Islands, we're going to go to Cape Verde, and we're going to cross the Atlantic from Cape Verde. And that is not going to happen before December. Yeah, so yes. we're heading to Spain now, and then we're going to take a little September break uh, back to Sweden. We haven't been back in a while, so we're heading there. Uh, let's see, we got back on the Polar Seal in end of February. Yes. So we've been on the boat for quite a while, actually. Um, so we're going to head back to Sweden, and then we'll get back to Spain, mm -hmm. head to either Madeira or Morocco, the Canaries, Cape Verde, and over. Yeah. It's really exciting, yeah. So we're going to start by going back to Almerimara, where we have spent the winter. And Almerimara is uh, where we are going to be preparing the boat. Um, that's where we know really good uh, really good technicians and really good mechanics uh, so we know that we can get all the resources that we need to prepare the boat there uh, and we're going to be spending yeah the time that we need to uh, get polar steel 100 percent ready before we cross santa does have a hard time finding people in uh, the middle of the atlantic for winter you're right so i'm going to decorate <laughs> the boat with lots of christmas lights uh, yeah it's true uh, as of now, we don't know yet exactly when in December we're going to cross. I think that we're uh, set on the like, end of December. End it, yeah. But it's, again, it's all going to depend on the weather that we find there. Yeah. So another question we've had about that, the timing and our plan is, are we going to do the arc? And yes. I saw some comments here already. Uh, we, we are not going to do the arc. And it's something that we've talked about quite a bit uh, with other people and between yeah. Sophie and I. Um, there's a few reasons for that. One is uh, the, for those who are wondering what the arc yes, is. Yes, let's define what the arc is. <laughs> Gosh, my, my, it's so humid in the air, my hair is <laughs> I'm gonna finish this live session with an afro, end of the bracket. So the, the arc is a, an Atlantic rally essentially um, that crosses from the Canaries all the way to uh, well, to the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and part of it stops in Cape Verde, or you can just go all the way. Um, and a lot of people do it. There's hundreds of boats every year that do the Arc. One of the nice things about the Arc is it is a it's a big environment. There's a lot of boats that go. Um, you, you're in the company of a lot of people, and it provides a sense maybe of safety and security. Yes. Even though I, I can and, com and community at sea. Yeah, there's some parties. There's a lot of workshops and things. Uh, so a lot of people choose to do this. We we did a lot of thinking about it, talked to a lot of people, and we're choosing not to do it Yes. for a few reasons, I'd say. I think that the first one is that it costs a lot of money. And we say a lot of money, it's around, it's between 2,000 and 3,000 euros, I think. I don't know if it's that much, but it is, a, it's, it is, it is it's a over 1,000, yeah. Uh, so that's reason one, it's, it's a bit expensive. And um, two, it leaves in November. Uh, because people want to get to the Caribbean before Christmas. We don't want to leave that early. The trade winds yes. haven't really settled uh, or become really stable by then. So we would like to go a little bit later um, yes. when the trade winds are a little bit more established. So for us, it's not as important to get to the Caribbean for Christmas time. And since we're not on such a tight schedule, we're not doing a one year Atlantic circuit, uh, us, you know, we could stay two years in the Caribbean if we wanted to or needed to. So having an extra month isn't going to make or break us. Yes. The Wandering Knaps, hi guys, uh, are asking us where does the ARC cost come from? I believe it's on their website. But again, uh, we're not 
like we're not going to do the arc so we're not like experts in that uh if if one of you guys want to go check out the arc website and see what it costs and maybe uh, <laughs> uh correct our mistake if we made one uh you're super welcome but anyways i think that i yeah to continue on what you were saying um most of the very experienced sailors that we know, and I'm thinking about Andy primarily, Andy Shell from 59 North, um, like recommend to cross the Atlantic uh, late December or early January. So, yeah. uh, so that's that's one reason that we're not going to do the art because we want to go a little later. We want to visit Cape Verde a little bit. We've heard many many good things from all our friends who crossed the Atlantic last year who went there. So. Yeah. I don't want to spend a little bit of time there. So uh, we're talking about, you know, just having our own rally. So if anyone's in their boats and wants to cross from Europe to, uh, to the Caribbean, you know, yes. you can always. Uh, we can, yeah, it's we, not an official. It's just yeah, like the can, unofficial. We're uh, thinking we're thinking about organizing our own little rally. Yeah. We'll see how that turns out. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I will have the time to really make it official and send a lot of emails. But uh, but it, it would be fun. I think it's uh, there is a, the, the community is really fun. Uh, but I don't want to be paying uh, several thousands of euros to be yeah. part of the community. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. So <laughs> that's that's the arc route and some of our timelines. So the last thing, which I know a lot of people are interested in, is preparation. We have mm -hmm. we did so much work on Polar Seal last year and the beginning of this year. There actually isn't tons to do. Uh, the boat's actually getting old enough now that um, some of the things we first installed we need to update. So yes. life raft needs to get uh, a servicing Service. and our flares. So there's a, there's a bit of a cost with that. We're happy with the majority of the boat. Uh, the only thing, major thing that we are going to do is uh, I was a bit inspired by, again, Andy Shell uh, from 59 North. He has a really nice... Uh, downwind rigging setup uh, with preventer lines that makes it really easy just to set a preventer so you're not oh i gotta go put the preventer up and then you don't do it and you have problems yeah so, like, let's explain what a preventer is for people who maybe are yeah. not uh, familiar with that term. sure yeah so sailing downwind it's really important to make sure the boom is not going to fly back around jive around uh if you catch the wind on the wrong side of it uh, maybe in some rolly seas so a preventer stops that or at least slows the boom down from from flying over um and i just want to have a really nice rigging setup so it's easy for us because we're shorthanded to attach the preventer and, and make it easy for us to sail downwind because that's the whole point of sailing in the trade winds is to catch the downwind sailing so uh, i find that pretty important so we're going to spend a little bit of time and money i have it all mapped out in my head just need to get it installed mm -hmm. um so that's that's a big thing we're going to do. We've done a few things already. Yes. We've had some small nav equipment things uh, that we replaced the log yesterday and mm -hmm. sort of toilet things. Yeah, we replaced our toilet pump. It went surprisingly well. Yeah, I did it in like 10 minutes. Yeah, that was yeah. crazy. But uh, then the last, I guess, addition that we want to do uh, is uh, we're getting a Iridium Go. Uh, so we... Yeah. Like to get some satellite connections so we can have weather offshore and be able to send small text messages and yes. small emails. It so. also means that we're going to have a page on our website where you can see exactly where we are in real time with little text messages and maybe photos uh, right when we're in the middle of the Atlantic, which is it's super cool. Uh, so we're going to have that when we cross. I'm not going to be adding any more solar panels, so we will not have one point. 21 gigawatts of <laughs> solar panel uh, on the boat, but uh, enough. We have enough, I think, as it is. Yeah. So the Iridium Go, and then we just have a few small things we've talked about, but it's primarily cosmetics, some canvas things we'd like to do, but um, we'll see about that. So, mm -hmm. yes. So, yeah, that's, uh, I think those are the preparations. Mm -hmm. It's just some rig setup. Oh, yeah, there's a, concerning the rig, we, we are going to re not redo but i'm going to modify our reefing system on our main sail because i'm not quite happy how it's performing that could probably be a one or two part video series on how we're going to do that but it's good that we've had the season to sail sail in some bigger winds and see how those things work because i can decide what i'm happy with and what i'm not happy with and now we go back make the modifications and uh then we have going to madeira to the canaries to 
yeah. see if it's all working well, and then we can head out. Exactly. Big Ocean Small Boat says that it's 4,250 pounds for the, uh, from the ARC website. My God, that is crazy. Woo. But again, you know, we know a lot of people who have done the ARC and who will do the ARC. And I, I can completely understand that it has a big value for a lot of people. Um, when, to be very, to be very honest, when we started thinking about crossing the Atlantic, when we started this project four years ago, we were thinking that the ARC was a brilliant idea. Like we were totally gonna do that. But now that we have just a little bit more experience and we start to know what it is that we want out of our sailing, we feel that it's probably best that we do it on our own. Yeah. Talking about that, another question, it's not a question that we had, but we received a lot of crew offers <laughs> for oh, the yeah. Atlantic. And we have not ruled out uh, completely taking crew for the Atlantic crossing, but it's something that Ryan and I kind of want to do on our own, just the two of us, because uh, I can't exactly explain why, but... It's kind of part of the dream, I think, was to do the sailing. Just yeah. I, uh, there is this sense of achievement. Like, you want to do it. It's like it's been our, our project and our dream for, for such a long time now. I think that I think that we're still in, like, the uptick of doing it, just the two of us. Yeah, exactly. So that's a little bit about what we're doing. And I think we can just dive into some questions. I've seen a few already. Yes. Um, Yes, uh, Sayulis asks uh, the induction stove. Yeah. Uh, if we're having a backup for the longer passage, that's a super good question. So in the galley these days, since we installed lithium battery on the boat, we installed a 3000 watts inverter and we have a uh, 1000 watts of solar panels, which is, it's insane. It's the best thing ever. I've been using an induction stove. It is a portable induction stove that you can buy at any like supermarket or um, you know household appliances, your local Best Buy. I bought it secondhand, so I bought it for 30 euros. It was the best purchase we've ever made. I've been using it a lot, but we still have our gas stove, which we use in bigger seas because my induction stove is not a boat induction stove and my pots glide on it, so I can't use it when there are waves. Uh, on top of that, we have a portable little gas stove that you use for camping i think just in case uh, everything were to crash so we have we have the induction stove we have the gas stove we have the gas oven we have the cooking stove but uh, more importantly when we're going to cross the atlantic we are i am going to because i'm i'm the one in charge of provisioning i am going to be provisioning food that does not need to be warmed just in case we have so many failures on board that we cannot cook food um, and I think that's uh, that's one part of provisioning. Like you need to have enough food that does not need to be cooked in case your cooking appliances fail, or food that does not need to be refrigerated in case the refrigerator fails. So that's uh, like a whole bunch of parameters that I'm going to take into account when we uh, provision for the Atlantic crossing. Okay. So next questions. Sophie and I are just going to switch switch off here. Uh, there's, there's actually. Oh, hello, Iowa. Hello, Katie. There's two questions that I want to answer here. Um, <laughs> there are shadows on Ryan's face. Yeah, are yeah, these that, hair? That's not what I was going to answer. It is <laughs> hair. I've been getting a little lazy shaving. One was about our sail, or the sails that we're using. Today on Polar Seal, we have a, main, well, the main sail. Uh, we have a high cut jib, which we never use. Uh, and then we have. 140% Genoa. We actually have two. We have the old one and the new one. We do not have plans to get a light wind downwind sail. A asymmetric would be what we would get if we got something. But we don't have plans to do that. We kind of ruled out a spinnaker because it's just a lot for two people to manage and the boat isn't exactly rigged up yes. for, very well for it. And also so, it's very expensive. And it's expensive. I looked at a, um, there's a sale called a parasailer, uh, but they are extremely expensive. So we are not going that. So we're just going to go with the basic sail configurations that we have. We also have a storm sail, a small sail to use uh, in very heavy winds. But my plan is to either sail with two head sails up and have one pulled up 
pulled out are um, Furler can handle, it has two tracks on it, or just just sail with um, the 140% Genoa and the mainsail uh, and have the mainsail off on one side and then have the uh, general pulled out on the other. Yes. So Julian says you'll need a pole too. We have a pole. We, have we a actually pole. have two poles. Yeah, we have a pole. So that will be okay. Uh, and we know how to use it. Important. Uh, so that's that's the configuration we have. Um, let's see. Somebody else also asked, like, well, what about our wardrobe and our spares and everything? And, and that's good. So the wardrobe, we have everything from very hot weather to very cold weather because we came from Sweden. So we're not so worried about that. Uh, but spare wise, I do have a pretty wide selection of spares. I keep a lot of things, but at some point you have to call it quits because there's just too many. You can't take a whole nother boat with you. So we know things that are important to us, maybe an extra fresh water pump um, and some parts for the engine, although it's not super critical. Um, I think the key is to find your really critical systems and make sure you have parts for those. And everything that's not mission critical, you just deal with when, when you get there. Yes. But the, but with that in mind, we did have a question about how are the two of us going to handle the boat that Oh, long? at night, yes. Philip, Philip says, hi, guys, from Mallorca. Oh, I love Mallorca. So during the Atlantic crossing beat, two people are going to handle night watches. If it's calm sea and moderate winds, or to pile up and sleep on deck. So, Philip, we've actually done... Most of our passages last year were multiple days passages where we were doing night watches like every day. Uh, typically what we do is that we take uh, four hours um, night watches. Uh, so typically from, what was it? 8 p.m. We to kind of midnight. change it up. Yeah, we kind of change it as, yeah. we, as we go. Um, but we typically do four hours. Here, if you come closer, like the lights, like yes. Yeah, more light on us. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I get a little sidetracked here. Uh, so, calm sea, moderate wind, autopilot, and sleep on deck. We have an autopilot. Uh, the autopilot is actually going to be part of our preparations as well. We have one at the moment. It's not 100% reliable, so we are going to change it, but we're going to keep our old one as a backup just in case. We typically do not sleep when we are on watch. We stay awake. I don't know how we're going to do it in the Atlantic because... It's ocean. There is a lot less things to hit than on the coast, which is the type of sailing that we typically do. Typically, when uh, when we're on um, passages these days, we, we do coastal. So there are a lot of things that you can hit. There are boats on the horizon, a lot of traffic. So we're always, always awake. But I don't know. Who knows? Maybe during the Atlantic, we are going to, I don't know, lose an app. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so here's another question. Uh, are we going to make a video on our dinghy motor? Yes, we have a huge list of videos uh, that we would like to make. We are running out of time uh, trying to get places and enjoy places. And uh, yes. it's just a lot. So we have a huge list of stuff. We, we have some other products coming up. So yes, we are going to do it. We just got to get the time. Yes. Uh, we, you, yeah, exactly. Because we've actually now used it really heavily for our Torquedo for a year. We're pretty opinionated about it now. So uh, all, all things good. So that's, yes. that's good. Someone asked if we know our boat uh, sticks. I do not know what the sticks No, is. I don't know either. So, I, have to, I have to admit. Yeah. What is the sticks? Someone, someone help us understand that term. Uh, Jules asked us about our water maker. Someone asked us how the water maker is working and how much water we're going to take with us just in case. So the water maker is working fantastic. It is... Um, Stability index. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll get back to that. The water maker is working actually yes. better than I thought it would. Yes. Um, and, and Jules is right. It won't break because I made it. Uh, but that's not true because it has broken a few times. But like I said in my video, one of the great things about it is because I made it, it's been very easy to fix. Um, so that is, is, it's good, but we will leave with our tanks full and probably, I think we decided to keep one tank reserved, so not being used. And then we'll probably have a number of bottled, bottled water. water on board yes. just in case. So, um, and then we'll, we'll ration it while we're there. The water maker, um, because of where I put the, the through hall where it sucks in the seawater, is, is not at the lowest point of the boat. And so sometimes we have difficulty running it under way um, off topic. So um, 
So yeah, that's what we'll do with uh, spare water. Mm -hmm. The stability index, so the sticks. Uh, polar steel is a category, well, it's rated in all the categories, A, B, C, and D. So uh, it is rated for ocean. It has an ocean rating. I don't even know if that means anything in the, in the world, but it does. So I'm not so worried about it. Lots of Benetos across the Atlantic. We're taking all the precautions we can, and that's, yeah, we'll yes. just go with it. Uh, Benjamin asks, how much does it cost? How much does it cost to live on a sailboat? Thanks. Well, uh, Benjamin, this is a topic that we've tried to cover. Um, you're gonna hate my answer, but it depends. It depends on the size of your boat. It depends on who you are, how you like to spend your money. It's a little bit like how, like, we could turn that question around. How much does it cost to live in an apartment in the city, or how much does it cost to live in a farm? Uh, like. It really depends. We've made a, a mini series of video about how much cruising costs, and we've compared the cost of cruising between three people. One of our friends who has a, had a very small boat, uh, 37, 37? What was it? 32 foot cage. Then our boat and an ML 54 from 2007, so pretty recent. So if that's that's the best answer that we can give. It depends, and uh, yeah, feel free to uh, go check out those uh, videos for uh, our kind of answer on the topic. A few people have said the video quality isn't very good. Is that the case with everybody, or do we need to try to fix something? This is the focus is not very good. Yes, I, I think that we need to stay close to this camera, otherwise, okay. like it gets very confused with the light and everything. Uh, <laughs> Oh, hi, UK. Oh, it's nice to see you. Um, okay, so one another question we just had was, um, do we have AIS on the boat? Yes, we do. Bad quality. Here, let's see. You, oh, you no. Can, here, we can try to change the interwebs. No, but that's going to that's gonna break the live oh. completely. I think that what we need to do is to not move. I'm going to try to not move. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe network issues. Oh, no. No. Okay, guys, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna change this network here. Maybe if I do this, la la la. Audio is good. It's the bandwidth. Maybe are you connected on our? No. No. Okay. Great. Improved over the last two seconds. That's when I disconnected my phone from the same Wi-Fi network that we were using. <laughs> Yes, so AIS, that's where we were. Sorry, guys. So we have AIS. We have an AIS that is both receiver and transponder that we had to abandon for a month. For a month, yeah. We but had some we problems with our AIS. Issues. So it got sent in. It's all better now. Life's good with the AIS. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody asked you, Sophie, maybe you should answer oh. us about your seasickness. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for asking. My seasickness has been way, 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 way better lately. So essentially, since we crossed between Ibiza and Mallorca in the Balearics, and we were taking uh, very steep waves right on the side of the boat, and it was making the boat um, like move like crazy, I found this trick where I balanced myself uh, in the middle, around the middle of the boat in the companion way, and I, I found that I don't really get seasick anymore. If I start to feel the first sign of nausea, I go there, I balance myself to try to compensate for the motion of the boat. And ever since that passage, I haven't used the patch, I haven't used any seasickness medicine, and I feel, I feel good. I think that uh, I've finally managed my seasickness, which is amazing. It feels great. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're doing pretty good with it. Yeah, during it's, our passage, during our passage from the Aeolian Islands back to uh, Sicily and through the Strait of Messina, the sea state was really bad, and I felt I felt nothing. Yeah, it was it was good. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, with all that discussion about the video quality, I'm lost on if people have other questions. So I don't see any right off the top. So ask away. Yeah, yeah. Ask yeah. Away. No, there was, I saw I saw a couple of ones that were good. It was before the video quality started to have some problems. Uh, how will you send videos from the Atlantic? Yes. You cannot live without one video a week. Oh, my God. So you're probably that's struggling right now. <laughs> not, not, not pressure. So that's a very good question. Hopefully, 
I hope that I will be able to edit a couple of videos that I can have uh, in the background um, of YouTube. And my brother has offered to be the one managing the channel while we are gone. So we are going to have a little takeover by my brother uh, while we cross the Atlantic, which, which should be fun. And also, if I don't manage to uh, edit videos, there will be a live tracking with live updates from our crossing on our website. So, um, so yeah. Uh, oh. Oh, how was the first experience with uh, the lithium batteries? Yeah, the lithium batteries. Okay, so uh, if you followed us this winter, we did three major things to the boat. The first was we put the arch on, and the arch is supporting the solar panels. So we have 600 watts of solar and dinghy davits. Then we put in uh, the lithium batteries, and then we put in a water maker. Those are the three massive things, probably more ambitious than it should have been. But all three of those things have beat our expectations yes. on how they would be and oh have completely God. changed our lives on Anchor. So. To put things in perspective, we left Almiramar in the beginning of April, yes. I think. Yeah, mid-April. Uh, we did a little bit of marining, uh, staying in marinas up the coast of Spain. Once we left the mainland of Spain, we have been on anchor pretty much since we left until today. And even today, we're not. Th there's a marina behind us, but we're actually sitting on a mooring ball that one of you... Uh, was very kind to to lend us. Yeah. Um, so we're not connected to any power, and we have no access to water. So uh, th those the batteries are keep pretty much every day. We're topped up by the end of the day, 100. percent Even when we run the water maker, the dinghy davits have been great to support the dinghy when we're out sailing. They've worked wonderful. Uh, so yeah, the lithium is just beating our expectations. We've been using the induction stove. We've been using. Uh, vacuum cleaner. We've been using, so we've been using all kinds of tools in the kitchen that run on AC. Oh my god, it's amazing! Like just to put things in perspective, you know, with uh, AGM batteries, lead acid batteries, it's really bad for the batteries to uh, take them under fifty percent, which is a reflex that Ryan has kept. And when the batteries reach the sixty percent, Ryan is like, "Oh my god, we're running low, we're running low." They're lithium batteries. We can take them down to five yeah. percent if we want, but we've never take them. We've never taken them under what fifty-five percent. I think is the lowest that we've uh, that we've gone with them. Yeah, exactly. So crazy. Like we have so much power. Yeah, we yeah, it's, and it's, the solar's working really well. The decks, the, the solar panels I put on our deck are not working so well, but more to come on that. I'm working with the manufacturer. My, you can see my my little sweat under my between my nose and my lip. Mm, classy. So yeah, to answer the question, the lithium is doing great. I would recommend lithium to anybody, but there's an expense and it is a little hard to install. So. Yes, I see a comment and I think it's from Sando, which is, who's one of our patrons, who sent me an email that I haven't answered to. I haven't forgotten you. I will answer your email. But uh, he says, I would be happy to see some Ryan Tech Corner videos about the preparation. We are absolutely going to do videos about the preparation for the Atlantic crossing. And you're a patron of ours. We have opened a list of video ideas for our patron where you can suggest um, like videos that you would like to see. And like, don't hesitate to let us know what kind of video you would like to see on our on specific aspects of our preparation, because we are definitely going to uh, to do a lot of that uh, once we uh, start our preparation. Oh, and Anton Seed from uh, Sailing Vessel in Pavidus. Hey, guys, say hi to your doggies. Are you going to be <laughs> to prep the boat in Almerimar? Yes, we are, because the English chandlery in Almerimar is a little unbeatable when it comes to the service you get. So uh, so we're going back to Almerimar in two weeks. Crazy. Uh, yeah, just back to the lithium question. Somebody asked, isn't it better for lithium batteries to be discharged to a lower percentage? That's true. I we don't. It doesn't always get up to 100. percent So sometimes it's only up to 80, and I use it down to 50, maybe. So that is true. Very good statement. You don't always need to get them up to 100, and it's better better for the service life. Yes. Uh, oh, hi, Wade. You really enjoy being a part of the page. Thank you for being here. 
How tall is Sophie's little brother? Oh my God, he is enormous. I have two brothers. They are so much taller than me. My little brother, one of them, was actually sailing with us between Sicily and Malta, and he will be in a video very soon. And he is as crazy. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't say crazy, but we're the same type of people. It's going to be a very fun video. So I'm excited <laughs> to share that with you guys. <laughs> we would really like to... Um, I don't know. Before we started sailing and we started watching YouTube channels, and you guys can chime in here, we we watched, you know, you watch people crossing the Atlantic and you get very into it because you're, you're trying to live the dream a little bit. But I always felt that there was something missing. Like, well, what do you have to do to, to get the boat ready? What do you have to, what are you thinking about? What do you do? And so these are all things Sophie and I have talked about. So we, we want to put together a, a series of videos on all the things from the preparation to our thinking to obviously the the adventure of traveling it but if there's things that you guys are really interested in want to see we'd love to have the ideas so we can put some stuff together it just takes a long time to do it <laughs> so sorry i missed that i was uh, typing what you no, say? i'm just saying that that we'd love to put together a whole series of videos on yes. how we how we get this whole crossing thing together yes absolutely but it does take take quite a bit of work so you got to bear with us on the time the time frame yes little. yes i uh i am currently two months behind so uh, so the videos that you see happened two months uh, happened two months ago which is it's a lot i get lost um so I, I really hope that i spend some time can catch up with the videos so that I, I get back to maybe like a couple of weeks uh back in time someone asked a really good question uh jerry nader asked is it a bad idea to leave aboard a sailboat completely alone we know a lot of people who do that. Yeah, we do. We know a lot of people. We have a, we made a new friend here in Malta, Mitch. Mm -hmm. He lives alone on his sailboat with that his he goes back yeah. with his wonderful doggy. Uh, so no, I don't. It's not a it's not a bad idea. Go he, for it. He, it's it's got its challenges, just like well, living with two of us has its challenges, and living with five people has its challenges. Yeah, but and they're just different alone challenges. Probably has its challenges. Yeah, yeah. We asked Mitch if he argues with his dog sometimes. He said yes. <laughs> Um, another question I just saw, are there wild moorings, uh, or, hold on. Oh, are, they, are wild, wild moorings, moorings easy, easy to come by in the med? I'm guessing that that question means, uh, is asking, is it easy to find spots to anchor? The answer is yes, to a point. How many was mooring buoys? There are mooring buoys, but not as easy as anchor spots. So oh. as we said, we have been anchoring since we essentially left. There's only been just a handful of times we've gone into marinas. One was to travel, so we don't count that, but... Um, yeah, th there's lots of spots to anchor. The issue is just that the winds are always changing, so you got to be cognizant of that. So as Sophie says, an anchorage in the morning, may, good anchorage in the morning may not be good in the afternoon, just with the swell moving around and the wind. Uh, and that's one of the things I'm most frustrated about here. But that said, the anchorages in the Med have been fantastic, beautiful, yes. green, green and blue turquoise water. Yes. There's not a lot of, it's mainly on sand and weed. And there so there's not some... like coral that you snorkel over and it's yeah. beautiful and fish everywhere. It's not like that. But the water's clear, boats, it's beautiful, history. Uh, there's a lot of the charter food, boats. The food, the food and the wine. There's a lot of charter boats and a lot of day power boats that will come into anchorages. So you got to be on your toes a little bit and just think that through, especially this time of year. But uh, other than that, uh, yeah, it's lots of places to, mm -hmm. to anchor, I'd say, yeah. Uh, Skipper Merman asked, any thoughts on continuing onto the Pacific? Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's also a reason why we chose to cross the Atlantic this year, because it's a step closer to the Pacific. I had this dream of sailing to Japan, but I think that I'm the only one on the boat to have that dream. I mean, I know that I'm the only one on the boat to have the dream to sail to Japan. But Ryan is with me on the idea to go sail to French Polynesia, which looks amazing. I have become completely obsessed with uh, Tahiti and Moria lately. Uh, those are places that I would really like to go to. And uh, you and I have been talking a lot about New Zealand as well. Yeah. But as they say, you know, sailing plans are made in the sand at low tide and uh, who knows what the future brings. I think, that, I think that what we're clear on is that we want to sail the Caribbean for a season. Ideally, we would like to uh, escape the hurricane season next year on the east coast of the U.S. Uh, 
that's if we get my my little visa issue sorted. Sophie's got a visa issue. so I had a little bit of a visa issue, but it's okay. We're going to figure that out. And yeah, I would love to go to Florida, to uh, South Carolina, North Carolina. I go all the way to uh, Annapolis. That would be amazing. Uh, so we'll, we will see. But yeah, Pacific, definitely. That's um, the... That would be the dream, but uh, one season at a time. <laughs> uh, so Mark asked, let's just see here. There was a question, but I think to go. Uh, Mark, oh, 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 oh. No, Mark asked if I was French. Yes, I am very much French. Uh, let's see here. Have you given? <laughs> this is uh, Mitch, you should have a dog on board. I know Mitch. <laughs> I know. But for now, I live through your dog. <laughs> uh, have you given any more thought to selling? Um, the monohull and getting a catamaran yes we were oddly just having that discussion today uh but unfortunately our finances don't allow a change at all yes. so um so we're, we're gonna we're, we're on the polar seal we're, we're on the polar seal for now polar seal is a great boat she is such a great boat she has become so much better over the last 12 months i yeah. like our boat yeah. she's a good boat she does everything we ask mm -hmm. uh, another question here i'll, I'll take is is uh, let me just read it is Ryan earning the money for your trip? How can you, uh, or how can you afford it? Or because you figure out how to make money, get advice on. Yeah, so um, the, the finance question is always a good one and a hard one and yes. a stress, an yeah. addition of stress on yes. the boat, I would say. So the answer is Sophie and I both um, earn money uh, through different ways. Uh, so I have some businesses that I work with in in the US and in Sweden uh, but I'm slowly kind of reducing that work level to focus on this project and focus on some of the things that you guys have said that you wanted which is more tech corner videos more uh, maybe blog stuff and uh, well Sophie and I maybe have some other projects coming as well that could be exciting so uh, that provides a little bit of income for that for us and I do a little bit of teaching on the side and then Sophie, uh, well, obviously we 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 have a little bit of support from well, you guys yeah. out there. We have uh, a lot of support from our wonderful patrons. Yeah. thank you guys for being here. It's amazing. It help, you know, every little bit helps, and we really appreciate it. So, uh, but the majority of of our income comes from the work I do on the side. So yeah, that that's is That's how true. we do it. But it is. It just you combine a lot of different things, yes. uh, and it it was a little easier last year than it was this year to do that. So yeah, yeah. I also want to mention something, which is that uh, I, I think that it's it's especially true on YouTube, but everybody makes it look like they have it all figured out. And I correct me if I'm wrong, but I have the feeling that not a lot of people talk about uh, how you know finances can be a source of stress as well when you live on a boat. A lot of people save for their sailing adventure. A lot of people figure out a way to get an income while they sail. And we did a mix of a little bit of everything, I guess. We saved some money originally. Uh, we made sure that we could have a source of income while we were out sailing. But that has also evolved into other projects uh, as we went. I don't know if that makes sense. but. We essentially make it work with a little mix of everything, of savings, of freelancing work. Uh, your teaching uh, career has taken off quite a bit uh, the last year. So, uh, so I think it's good to have a general plan. But I also think that for a lot of people, you figure it out as you go. Yeah. Uh, because things change. You realize that uh, you budget it for a certain amount of money, but uh, in fact, you're maybe going to spend, I'm saying that randomly, but maybe going to spend a little more on your boat and a little less on food than what you had planned for. So uh, so I think that with, as with the rest of the sailing life, uh, budgeting requires a little bit of flexibility when, uh, when you're sailing. Those are my thoughts, my personal opinion. Uh, <laughs> they do not reflect the personal opinion of everybody in this community, but I just wanted to mention. Uh, somebody asked, what do I teach? Yes, I do a lot of teaching in aerospace. The topics range from navigation systems to unmanned drones, uh, legal issues with that. But what I've found is that I actually really like teaching. Uh, I think a lot of you like the videos that we do on the tech corner. 
I love answering your questions and I love discovering new things. So what we're hoping to do is take those two things and mesh them together over the coming years and hopefully start maybe doing some workshops and, and other things on topics that people like. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just what the community wants and uh, what we think we can add to the community. So I think that's that's important, yeah. So uh, Mona Lau said, for story också dansk, jag är dålig till engelsk. Uh, jag pratar lite svenska, eller inte lite, jag, jag pratar svenska. Så jag förstår dansk lite grann, men inte så mycket. Jag kan läsa, förstår inte så bra. Okej. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, this one we need to uh, answer. Sayalist so ask, what are the places that you plan to visit in the Caribbean? That's a really good question because we don't really have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a plan. It's it's very true. We need to spend some time thinking about that. Yes. Um, again, it goes back to this idea that you know sailing plans are made in the sand at low tide. We have a couple of places that. We have in mind, I think that the French islands are a place that we will like to go to. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, you need to you need to come oh, so that you know the camera can focus. Breaking the rules. And, yes. Sorry. Um, Ryan used to spend vacations in the Virgin Islands. The yeah. Virgin Islands. So it'd be kind of fun to go back there. And I think that your family would like to join us there, yeah, maybe as well. Maybe. And one wild card that I would like to play is Cuba. I think I would like to go to Cuba. I want to check out that place. It intrigues me. <laughs> so, uh, so stay tuned. We have not make a, we have not made a plan. So here's a question: uh, If you could sail on another boat other than an ocean, as it says 49, but we we're actually on a 40. I wish we had a 49. What would you dream of? And that's a topic that um, it changes every day. That well, I think we have a few settled down. But I think the biggest thing for us is space. So the 40, I always thought was huge. Now that we're out, we're like, it's man, so tiny. Sophie and I need some more space just for our own sanity. Um, but there are some boats that we, I think, really love. I mean, Polar Steel is great. Uh, so just take it the right way, <laughs> Polar Steel. But uh, we really love the uh, Garcia Exploration Series, which is out. Uh, and then there's a Halber Rassi 44 that I really, really love. Sophie likes some of the catamarans we've been on. So yes. those are the boats. But to be honest, I mean, if you make your boat yours, you're going to love it. Uh, and so, yeah. But yeah, we could use some more space. We'd love it. We just don't. Again, it's like we've put so much into Polar Seal. And it does cost quite a bit to buy a new boat and then do everything we've done again. So this is what we got now. Yeah. Yes. Philip asks, Sophie, how many languages do you speak? I speak three. I speak French, English, and Swedish, because we've lived 10 years in Sweden. And uh, Makani Mike uh, asks if we both have Swedish citizenship. We do, and we have dual citizenship. So I'm originally French. I am now also a Swede, and Ryan is American and Swede. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll let you answer this after I answer this one. OK. okay. Uh, so Henrik asks, when was the rigging checked so the rigging i'm guessing he's staying the staying rigging uh so that is the rig that holds the mast up so the sails fly um we actually had that checked in the survey when we bought the boat the boat was 10 years old when we bought yes. it uh we elected at the time to change the rigging then so we've actually the rig on this boat is only two years three years old uh, and I do periodic checks on it. I go up the mast and yeah. take, not that I'm an expert, but I do take a look. We did have the tension checked before the start of the season. Yes. So the rig is pretty new. All the running rigging, so all the lines, the ropes that are attached to everything, those are all been replaced as well. Um, so I'm pretty confident in that and I do periodic inspections on everything. So I'm confident in the rig setup uh, and if something were to break, it would be something that you can't visually see or it was just a complete fluke. So you can't prepare for all that. Yeah. So yeah, co confident in that. Mm -hmm. Jean-Luca asked, Ryan, what kind of drone do you fly? What kind of drone do you fly, Ryan? <laughs> so here's the drone story. Sophie bought me a... Uh, it was not only me, it was your friend and my friends as well. for, for my birthday a few years ago, a DJI Phantom 4. Uh, Sophie's the one that flies it the most, oddly enough. I very rarely fly it. She likes to get the shots. 
Uh, so she flies it. We do fly it from the boat when it's going, which can be quite sporty. Uh, but I usually hold it and we launch it off the side. And then mm -hmm. Sophie, I kind of guide her in with words. <laughs> yes. And, we make uh, a pretty good team. I feel that I need to develop um, the story of how Ryan got a drone for his birthday three years ago. So you you guys won't believe it, but making videos of our sailing adventure was originally Ryan's idea. That was he. That's what he wanted to do. Like he was the one looking into equipment and uh, and how to do things. So I thought that buying him a drone was the perfect birthday gift. And uh, and things changed. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but uh, no. I originally was not the one. I, I didn't plan to be the one flying the drone, but no, yeah, you do. I, do. I catch it. You need to, you need to come. Oh, yeah. You need to come closer. I catch the drone. So I that's the drone. That's what we do. It is. It is. It can be quite sporty, but we make it work. Ooh, that's a good one. Benjamin says one of you. One of you might need to be sleeping in a dinghy to get your space. So. <laughs> The original name of the dinghy, before we call the dinghy our Tesla because it's uh, powered by electricity, uh, the original name of the dinghy was Ryan's bed. Because the true. dinghy was going to be used as a bed for Ryan when he misbehaved. <laughs> uh, yeah. You've never slept in the dinghy. No, I have slept up here once. It's yeah, been so hot lately. That's because it's a little hot. Uh, Yannick asks, um, Hi, Yannick, by the way. Uh, have you calculated how much diesel you need for the crossing? And my answer to that is the diesel that we need is the diesel that we have. Yes. So we That's have as much as we can. As we much have, as we can. We having the motor on is terrible, especially at night. Oh my so, god. So unless we absolutely need to motor, we won't. Uh, we carry two hundred liters in the tank and then two twenty liter jerry cans. So it's enough for us to motor nonstop for about four days, which is not very far. No, which is, crossing. yeah. Someone else asked how long the crossing was going to be uh, for the Atlantic. It's between, it's hard to say. It's probably going to be between 15 and 21 days, something like that. So uh, yeah, we're definitely not going to be able to carry enough fuel to cross the Atlantic on the engine, yeah. which, oh my God, that sounds really hellish. I would hate to do that. We uh, we made a couple of crossings this year in the Mediterranean uh, on the engine nonstop. Uh, one of them was for two days. Two days horrible. on the engine is awful. It was like, four knots of winds for two days in flat seas. It was horrible. Oh my God, <laughs> no. So we're really looking forward to some good trade sailing. Um, like we're looking at a one week passage that we're going to start doing uh, in Friday. So, uh, so this coming week. And hopefully we can sail most of it. It looks like we can have some, we can catch some good downwind between Sicily and Spain. And I'm really looking forward to some good sailing because, um, like the, the being on the engine for days at a time is really not a fun experience. Not to mention it's expensive, so pretty unnecessary. Somebody just asked Henrik. Henrik's asked fishing supplies for the crossing. So this is our new. Yes. This is our new thing. We have purchased a number of fishing supplies over the last month. Um, we caught one fish. We did catch a, Sophie caught a fish, oddly enough on a hand line, yes. so just a line thrown out. And we, we didn't even think anything that was on it. And when we were pulling it in to, to get the line clear of another boat, um, there was a tuna that was like- A little a little bonito. This big, so it was great. But then when we were in Sicily, we decided to totally upgrade our, um, our kit, our fishing mm -hmm. kit. Yes. And we have a full, huge rod and reel, and we can pull in like a hundred kilo tuna now. Which we have not caught. Which we have not caught, but no. we're hoping. So, um, so yeah, that's that's the fishing kit. But Sophie has been the only one with any luck. That said, we did catch something on oh our first God. line. Oh my God, yes. Okay, we need to tell that story. So the first fishing rod that we bought was, because we bought two. It was very small. We had no idea what we were doing. We had no idea what we were buying. We bought a fishing rod with a reel on the advice of a sales guy who I don't know. If I don't. I don't think he knew what he was doing either. Anyways, and so we bought this rod, which we got to learn like the thread that was on it was way too thin, and we, <laughs> we attached this huge lure to it. Very efficient lure, best lure we've heard, with like big hooks, and then we. 
straight at sea between Sardinia and Sicily. And in like uh, 10 minutes, we got a bite. We get a bite. We and get a bite. It, and then it took my lure. Yes. And then <laughs> goodbye lure because the, the thread was way, way too thin. So that, that was a bit of a fail. We learned a, a lesson. We, we lost a 25 euros lure. Yeah, yes. I was pretty well. sad. Pretty sad. And when Ryan, because uh, you gave up after a while, and I was like, no, I want to fish. So I rigged a hand line uh, while we were cruising along the coast of Sicily. I was like, oh, okay, there must be a way that we can catch a fish. So I rigged the hand line, and we didn't think that it was going to get anything, and we just reeled it up, and there was a fish at the end of it. Ah. Okay, beautiful tuna. Yeah. So yes, we, we have fishing gear. We hope we catch some stuff. It was the first time I had caught a fish and gut it and killed it and cleaned it. I don't think we did that very really well. Though. We didn't do it well, but no. now I have a better idea what I'm doing. No, we also bought a knife. We, now we have a proper knife. Yes, because so. we used the kitchen knife. Um, yes. And this is a good. This is a good one. I'm gonna. I'm gonna answer this one. Uh, Neuron 666 ask 666. Do you guys see any refugees? We don't. We haven't seen any. Uh, it's on your. It's on our minds. Uh, you know, I don't think that you can. You cannot sail the Med without thinking about it because you get radio calls. Um, you hear radio calls on Channel 16. You hear uh, pan pans and security with navigational warning. And often you will hear something like, "Oh, there is a rib of eight meters with 30 people on board that's drifting." Blah blah blah. And you know. You know, you know what it is, and it's it's really sad. Uh, so, most of the refugee boats, if I'm not mistaken, come from uh, they come to Malta and southern of Sicily. So those are the cruising grounds that we are on right now. We haven't heard uh, many radio calls. We heard most of them around the Strait of Gibraltar. But uh, but that's something that we have in mind. So uh, next week when we're going to start crossing between Malta and Almerimar, it's it is on our minds. We haven't seen any, but uh, like, you can't, you cannot not think about it. So it's out there, yep. Mm -hmm. um, I saw one about the weather. Yeah, if we use two, pretty quick. There's two actually. Uh, are we worried about the weather forecast and the, the poor forecasting we've experienced lighting? And then the other one from Lynn is do we use predict wind? So I'm not worried so much about the weather. The trade winds are pretty well established. Uh, of course, things can come up, so I'm not so worried about that. I actually think the weather forecasting uh, has been pretty okay in the med. At least gives you a pretty close idea. We do use Predict Wind. Uh, I really like the software. I used a few other ones as well this year just to kind of do some compare and contrast. Um, but we do use that. That's what we use for the um, for the crossing, and that's actually who we ordered our Iridium Go from. Mm -hmm. So uh, they have a kind of a full service there. So we ordered it through them. Yes. Frank asks, do you have internet for the crossing? I wish. Well, I'll have a little bit of data with the Iridium Go, but it's That's it's about only, five times yeah. slower than your first dial-up modem in your computer. So it's nothing we'll be surfing the internet on. So don't send us any big pictures. Uh, no, like we're not, we're, are we gonna, we're not going to download our emails. The internet is just going to be to... Uh, download the weather forecast and uh, upload some messages to uh, the tracking app. So that's that's all it's going to be for. Uh, I think like Neuron 666 has some really good questions. Uh, how do you guys go to the toilets? It must be hard going to the toilet. I mean, those are really good questions because those are the questions that I asked myself four years ago, you know, when I didn't know how a boat even looked like. So we have a toilet on board. It's uh, It's great. It works good, uh, although the, the hole is a little small sometimes, I feel. It's very easy to get like toilet anxiety on a boat because the hole is so small and you're scared that the poop is going to get stuck in there. I'm sorry if I'm getting graphic here. You, you guys are allowed to, uh, uh, <laughs> to correct me in the comments. But anyways, uh, sometimes going to the bathroom in the middle of a passage can be a little sporty depending on if you sail a queen or not, or on the sea state. Um, a friend of ours, Ben, has what he calls the Ben uh, sea state scale, which is measured uh, by how much you need to brace yourself in the bathroom in order to do your thing. Uh, so you have the one-hander, the two-leggers, you know, <laughs> and the two-handers have to, like, kind of grab the walls around you to uh, stay stable. But, yeah, it can get pretty sporty. 
Yep. Toilet life can be a bit hard, and then you got to fix it like I did yesterday. So always oh, fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you get used to it, and you just deal with it after a while. Uh, let's see here. Steven Lancaster says he sucks at time zones, so he's late. Yes, Steven, you're we're, bad. You're so bad. We're no, expecting an Steven apology. Is a friend. Steven is a friend of ours. Steven by the is way. my oldest uh, <laughs> elementary school friend, so it's nice to see him on online here. That's Someone great. is wondering how uh, our plant is doing. Well, here it is. Uh, it's gotten quite big, actually. So as you can as you can see, Brian is starting to uh, to grow a little uh, little to the side, and I'm starting to wonder if I shouldn't repot him because he's getting he's getting big. Um, so if anyone is an expert in succulents, uh, please let me know how I am supposed to uh, take care of this, you know, growing hair mass on uh, Brian's head. Yeah. Yes, Benjamin, you're gonna have to balance yourself while you're using the head. It's 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 hard hard life. Uh, I had there's a question here. It's a good one because we haven't explained Sophie's visa issues. I don't know if we will. But any plans of marriage in the future, I ask because of visa issues. So I'm sure Sophie and I may get married in the future, Maybe. but it will not be because of visa issues. We no. don't believe in that. And no. we are pretty opinionated about the visa process in the US. Um, we'll keep that to ourselves, but no, we would not do that just to get around visa issues. So hope, I think we'll get the visa thing all sorted. It's, um, it's a little bit of a challenge at the moment, but uh, then we'll on our adventure. Yeah, we'll see. We're um, so yeah. Uh, just to, uh, I think we can give a little bit of context. Sure. But uh, essentially, what happened is that uh, when what? Well, first off, Sophie technically doesn't need a visa to go to the U.S. So yeah. it's a visa waiver. It's an ESTA. So many countries have this, and um, she has one. She had one, uh, but the thing passed. is, is to enter the United States on a pleasure craft that could be a boat or an airplane. You cannot enter on an ESTA. You need to have a B1 or a B2 visa. So we thought- Good for you guys to know if you're not a US citizen and plan to sail to Florida or the Virgin Islands. So yes, so we um, decided to let's get ahead of this a little bit. So she went to the embassy in Paris uh, and was denied because she had spent a bit of time, too much time this winter on her ESTA in the US and they thought that she was to be fair i did not spend too much time on my no no staff, you were there yeah yeah but the the agent thought that it was too early for me to apply for a visa so i got denied which is going to be a little bit of a like process for me to uh, to get that so we're just gonna like pause the whole uh visa application process until we really need, need it, it. Yeah. uh and and hopefully it goes better next time but uh so yeah that's, that's, the, just, bit that's of a the story but it's challenges we have them every day so are okay. you allowed to have a warm compost on your boat to fertilize your plants i mean it's your boat you can do anything <laughs> so yes if you want to uh, fertilize your plants with poop you can do that <laughs> i i personally wouldn't that wouldn't be my 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 go-to solution to fertilize brian but but why not Oh. oh, do you have a bread maker on board? Uh, and will you up the fridge freezer capacity? That's a good question. So we we, we have a bread maker. It's me. <laughs> uh, we don't have a bread maker machine. It would be great, but we don't really have the space. This year, because of the lithium batteries and the solar panels and the big ass inverter, we bought a food processor. We didn't buy it. My mom offered it to me as a birthday gift. That was very nice. So I have this like thing that makes it easier to um, to blend. Um, but no brand maker. It takes too much space. Uh, and also, if we uh, want to up the fridge freezer capacity, that is actually something that we did this year, uh, back when we were in El Marimar and preparing the boat for the season. In the Ocean is 40, we have both a front loading fridge and a top loading fridge. The top loading fridge was an ice box and this year we upgraded it to a full fridge. So now we have ooh, twice the fridge capacity, which is great. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's super convenient. It works, works really nice. Uh, John asks, are there any thoughts on extra first aid equipment or training for the crossing? So um, we will, pr we have pretty robust 
first aid kit. We will probably get uh, some additional medication, maybe some antibiotics and some stronger painkillers yes. from a uh, get it prescribed from a doctor um, before we go. We don't. We Sophie and I both took a uh, last year, about a year and a half ago, took a wilderness first aid course, a three day wilderness first aid course. That is probably all the training that we need. I personally have a big interest in medicine. I think I would have liked being a doctor, but I, I'm too old now, so I think I've missed my calling. Uh, but I do have plans here in the future to take a, a wilderness EMT course to get a little bit more training, but I'm doing that strictly for me and because I want to be able to help people besides ourselves if we're out there and actually feel like I know what we're doing. So, or I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So that's a, more of just a me and wanting to help people and know how to, to do that. If, yeah, so. I am kind of the opposite. I really have to force myself into medical stuff because I'm extremely sensitive to blood. Blood makes me faint. Uh, it doesn't even need to be blood. Like guys, when we took this first aid course, it was a three days course and it touched base on like pretty much any type of injury that you can encounter in the wild. So everything from burns, uh, infections, uh, bone fractures, everything. Uh, and so two hours into the course on the first day, we were going through CPR and I don't know what happened. I woke up under the table and I had passed out because CPR and I, I don't know why. So, uh, so I'm glad that you're into that kind of stuff. If anything happens to you, I will be there hopefully. <laughs> uh, I think the, hopefully the adrenaline kicks in and I can help you. But to follow up on John's comment, I did actually cut myself last year pretty deep uh, while we were in uh, Imuden and about to leave for Charbot. We didn't have time to go to the doctor and I just taped up my finger. And when we, oh, got, remember in, that. When we got in Charbot two days later, it was still bleeding quite heavily uh, and getting all over the place. So, um, well, we went to the pharmacy and my sister's a nurse and she said, I'd the doctor won't do anything, just super glue it. So it's pretty much what we did. Um, yeah. Do you have a sea anchor, William asks? We no, do not. We don't. That would be a good thing to invest in. When we cross, I don't think that we're going to get one for the Atlantic, but for the Pacific, I think that it yeah, is something I, that we would I don't we think we'll get. get a sea anchor. I think what we'll get is a uh, Jordan series drogue. Yeah. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, you can look it up. They're pretty cool. They're big, long cones. These cones, there's hundreds of them that hang off the back of the boat. Uh, and slow you down uh but that that also is a big project because i would need to build some stuff onto the side to support it so Janik mm -hmm. asked if we have any an epurb on board obviously absolutely like the epurb is uh, one thing that we bought we didn't have an epurb when we were doing uh sailing in stockholm's archipelago uh but since we left that's like one of the first thing that we bought uh, before leaving so we do have an epurb Let's see, David asks, just curious, do you guys have air conditioning on Polar Seal? Oh, I man. wish. We both wish we did right I now. I wish. We have a couple fans. Yeah. Uh, and I did buy an air scoop the other day. Air and it's kind of weird. <laughs> analog air analog, con. Analog air con, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Colin asks a good question here. Do he says, do we have a sextant? We do have a sextant. I am trying to learn how to use it. Uh, we've used it a couple times out when we were motoring around. So I am getting familiar with it. I understand the concept of it. I just have not put it in practice. So a sextant, if for people aren't familiar, is a device that essentially takes angles from the horizon to an object. It could be the sun or star or planet. And based on that and time, you can figure out where you are with longitude and latitude anywhere on the planet. Uh, it's the old way of navigating. And uh, what's nice about it, it's analog. So you don't rely on the satellites and you don't rely on anything else. So um yeah so i'm trying to learn how to do it because i think it's really cool and it's more just for me versus safety thing i trust our navigation systems but um and yeah, it's, it's fun it's, it's kind of cool yeah it's it's kind of fun too uh david c asked what is an epurb oh that's a good question a little bit of context here what is an epurb so an epurb is a device that will send um a distress signal to the rescue uh, via satellite when it's activated. So if we ever are in a situation where we absolutely need rescue, we'll activate the EPIRB to get rescued. That's what it is. Uh, oh, let's yeah. see. 
Yeah, Wandering Naps says, we are w wanting to learn uh, the old ways of navigation, which is the sextant way. It's very cool. If you're in interested in that stuff and want a good story, uh, there's a book called Longitude, which is all about, well, find how they found longitude and the, the race to get accurate longitude. Latitude was easy. Longitude was more difficult. Uh, and it's a sh pretty short book, but it's really good and, and really interesting. So I can recommend that. And then Sid are sitting watching uh, with their aircon on full tilt. Guys, every time that I am extremely hot on the boat, I remember your big AC and uh, I'm, I'm jealous. I will admit to it. I am very jealous of, of you right now. So uh, let's see here. What health insurance are available? That's a good question. We have we are having to deal with some insurance things that we haven't had to deal with. So we're having to update our normal boat insurance. Uh, and we haven't dealt with health insurance because we've been in the EU the whole time and we're covered under the EU health scheme. Mm -hmm. So we will have to get, um, well, updated health insurance for us while we're away. That is not something that we've... Uh, really delved ourselves into yet. No, and we'll do more on that. I think as we yeah, find more. like yeah. we're we're gonna need that because uh, I think that as long until we are in the Canaries, we are covered under the EU yeah. uh, health insurance. But after that, so we will keep you updated on what we we're gonna need find to we're gonna there. need to upgrade. Yeah. All right, let's see. What percentage of cruisers still use sextants? About three? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I think there's quite a few that use them, but uh, I think there's quite a few that have them on board that know how to use them. I'm not quite sure. But it is something I want to learn. I'm going to take a course. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Do countries require you to have health insurance to enter the country? I'm not sure about that. It, I guess that it really depends on the country, but I... I have never heard of that before. I can't say like we're really no experts. We haven't we haven't officially entered any country. Surprisingly enough, Malta, which is in the European Union, kind of asked us to check in, but not really. But eventually, we checked in. Um, we've stayed in the European Union so far. Uh, once we leave the Canary Islands, that is going to be the first time that we leave the EU. And when we start sailing in the Caribbean, we're gonna start checking in in different countries. Um, so we don't really have any experience of that. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. It's been It's been an hour, almost an hour and 15. Like you guys let us know when you start to be tired of us uh, <laughs> and, we, and we start getting boring and uh, here I'm and gonna I'm gonna address this so Mike asks from South Africa asks on a scale from one to ten how anxious are you about this trip I'm gonna oh, dive I don't even know that I'm gonna dive into a whole topic here oh my god <laughs> and it is about anxiety like you guys you guys stop us when you start to think that it's it's too much no it's not but what what so I'm actually not very anxious about this trip but what I've learned about myself on the last two years of sailing is that I'm a very anxious person uh, and have a lot of anxiety about many things. Uh, and I had that probably all my life. But when I was flying and doing things, I could at least, when I was done flying, you go and relax and whatever. But in sailing, you don't have that. You're on your boat all the time. So all the anxiety, all the anxiousness, all the nerves, all the frustration is you live with it. You're always with you. So I've been dealing with that a lot this year, and I realized that that was a big problem, and it's probably one reason that many of you see me as the grumpy captain, as we've named myself on board the boat, which I'm typically not. Um, uh, so I'm not usually the grumpy guy, but uh, a lot of it has to do with anxiety, and what I've also discovered is that many sailors actually have this uh, anxiety and it's just not talked about much. So I've decided I'm gonna start talking about that. So uh, anxiety and feelings, especially with men and sailing. So stand tuned, stay tuned for that because there's maybe some projects here mm -hmm. surrounding that. Terry yeah. asks, what pilot ratings do you have? Ah, uh, yes. I have all of my pilot ratings through my commercial, I have my commercial multi-engine ratings with an instrument and then I also have my flight instructing certificates. What does that mean? It means I can fly two engine airplanes and do it commercially. I do not have an air transport certificate. I didn't know that. Yes. Wow, you learn new things every day. Yeah. 
You're cool. <laughs> uh, oh, there is. Oh, I didn't know that Jules and uh, and Ed knew each other. We'll look after us for you. Aw. I would look after Oz too. I, I love your dogs, guys. They're so cute. Uh, what is, oh, Magic Man, what is each of your most favorite food item that you can't live without and taking a large amount of on the crossing? I can answer that question for Ryan. So, Ryan's favorite food is pizza. Fortunately, pizza is pretty easy to make on the crossing, so I expect that we are going to have pizzas. What is my favorite food, Ryan? It's a it's a it's a trap question because I don't even know the answer myself. Sleeping out here tonight. <laughs> Sleeping on the dinghy. No, I don't know what my favorite food is. Uh, all the food, all all the food is my favorite food. Um, I don't know. Uh, all right. So, uh, do I miss flying? That's a question for me. I miss recreational flying. I actually miss flight instructing the most. This is another one of my teaching things. I love teaching. I love flight instructing. I do not miss professional flying uh, at all, and I don't think I would have liked it. So, mm -hmm. but yes, uh, pleasure flying would be great. Mm -hmm. Benjamin asks, "Would you make a video and teach us once you have learned the traditional way of navigating?" I'm gonna say not on this channel. Really? Yeah, Why I don't not? think we're gonna do that. Yes, the answer is yes. We will make a video, but I think we're gonna that make. That would be so cool. I think we're gonna make that video with somebody else uh with another yeah. with another group so stay tuned for that okay. yeah uh but it will be very informative it would be great uh but it won't be through ryan so really yeah. uh well yeah but it will be done <laughs> <laughs> we'll see oh what's the biggest type of aircraft you've flown I don't even I don't I don't know the answer to Not, those questions no, no big transport i'm right, learning so. i'm learning new things myself yeah not, yeah, it's been smaller business aircraft and some military stuff. All right, I think uh, I think that someone asked us. Oh yeah, aboard the Aeon, ask us how old we are. How old uh, are we, Ryan? I am. I have to answer that question for Ryan all the time. Ryan always asks me, "How old am I again?" Ryan believes that he's forty. Ryan is not forty. Ryan is 37. That's right. How old am I, Ryan? 33. Good. You know, you know, you're, you know my age better than you, than you know your own. All right. Do we have more questions or should we just wrap it up? I well, let's see. Does anybody, we, we can stay on for another five minutes or so. Yes. Who, any more questions before we head off? By the way, before, like, yeah, before we address any more questions, I, I just have to say that, uh, Guys, thank you so much for being part of this community. You are so awesome. It is so cool to share our adventure with you. Um, when you are too on board the sailboat, like you start missing your friend and missing your family. And also, um, you know, Ryan and I share this adventure, uh, the, the two of us, but it's something really special about uh, sharing it with so many other people. Uh, I, I can't really explain it, but Every time that I pick the camera, I think about you and it makes me happy and I'm excited to, uh, to be like, oh, look at this beautiful building or oh, this sunset is so pretty tonight. So, um, and it's it's nice to read your comments every week. Uh, it's uh, We do have yeah. a great community. You guys are really, really awesome. Yes. And it's, yeah. it's fun, yeah. It's making, so. it's making our adventure like just so much more fun to, uh, to have you with us. So, uh, so thank you. We do have a few good questions just before we go. Oh. Uh, I think. Let's just see here. Hey, Hendrik said, damn, I got kids your age. <laughs> yep, that will happen. Oh, one question was, what is the average age of people we meet out cruising? That's interesting. We the age do, of our parents. Yeah, we do. <laughs> that's true. Uh, they're generally older than us, and that's fine because everyone's super cool for the most part. Mm -hmm. We do meet people our age occasionally, and when we do, we get a little excited because it is people our age, but um, there's people here chatting with us today and watching that we've met throughout the year, and they're just, they're awesome. Mm. So uh, we don't really see age as, no. as a limit. It's- No, we've made- We mean all, we, we've met young people out too, to be very honest, single single solo, solo sailing and so uh, yeah, but it's definitely older than us is the average age, yeah. Yes. 
Uh, Julian asks, so no return to Lagos. We are, we try to make it work in the planning. We really wanted to. We even considered uh, doing all of our Atlantic preparation in Lagos, but Almerimar is so much cheaper and we can't really justify the cost of preparing the boat in Lagos versus Almerimar. So uh, we love Portugal. We really wanted to go back to Colatra, to Olao, to Benaguil and to Lagos. And we really wanted to see you again, uh, Joel and Tani in Lagos. But we just can't motivate for ourselves the, uh, the extra expense. If we can, we will make it. But uh, I think it's, it's going to be a bit of a stretch, unfortunately. I'm going to answer this question, and I think you should answer. I'm going to answer this one. Oh, yeah. I'm answer this one. Okay. Yes. So William asks, do you, will we get a hydro generator? So a hydro generator is a, like a propeller that goes in the water, spins, turns a little motor, and powers your batteries. Uh, I think they're super cool. Uh, I don't think we need one based on our setup. Uh, they're only really good if you're sailing. So uh, I would love to have one. They're expensive, and we're at a point with Polar Seal that we, if we put much more into Polar Seal, it really has to be justified uh, because we've invested a lot into this boat oh already. Oh my God, yes. So I can't quite justify a hydro generator for us right now. Um, and I would rather save that money and have it in the, the kitty. Mm hmm. Yes. So you had a question there. Yes. Cyborg Eagles asked a few good questions. I'm going, I'm going to address all of them. But how much time do you spend editing each video? Uh, between 15 and 25 hours. So it's it's quite a lot of time. But uh, I do it because I really enjoy it. Um, some people like to write. They like to paint. I like to edit videos. It's I think it's fun. So uh, I really don't mind doing that uh sometimes ryan has to remind me to eat uh because i forget i get really i get really into it uh so yeah it takes time but i i enjoy it and cyber cyborg eagles also asked can i meet someone cruising is it possible yes definitely uh we've met so many more people out on our sailboat than when we were working uh and we make m much more, many more meaningful connections with people uh, now that we are cruising than, you know, when we were working. Because most, like when we were working, most of the connections that we made were professional. Uh, I think that when you live on a sailboat, you make your connection a lot quicker and they go deeper, uh, way faster. So, so yes, uh, I think we've met a lot of people who single hand, a lot of people who have who don't have a partner uh, and who meet their, you know, their special, their significant other while cruising. Um, yeah, actually, we met a lot of, almost all the single, almost all the single-handing uh, sailors that we've met have met someone on the water. That's true. Yeah. At least, at least they've met at least one person, if not more. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Maybe I should start a, a gossip magazine for a sailing life. What do you think of this idea? Give it a thumbs up or down. <laughs> so, uh, well, I think that's the question. Ben Benjamin here at the end says, it feels like I'll be the first 18 year old to start sailing soon. That's Go for it. Go for it. You won't be. You will be young out there. You won't see a lot of others, but don't, you should just go for it. Don't let the, uh, the age stop you. It will just make you better. Yes. So, uh, yeah, well, I think the comments are slowing up, so uh Yeah, no, there are like there are a few a few other ones, but most of them that we've already addressed. Uh have you are you going to have a body boat during the crossing? Yes, hopefully. Hopefully. If anybody wants to is crossing and wants to cross with us, you're Give welcome us, to. Yeah, Drop send us, us an little, email. Send us a little email. We yeah. uh we, we love that. Or if you know people who are crossing and they want a buddy boat, just mm -hmm. drop us a note, let us know. Yeah. Uh also uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. My seasickness is a lot better. I do not use any medication anymore. I am not really seasick anymore. I try to uh, eat, drink, rest enough, and keep myself balanced. Uh, it's been a, a lot better. Also, I think that my confidence, you know, on the boat has uh, improved tremendously over the last uh, five, six months. Mm -hmm. And I think that has had a major impact on my seasickness. 
Paul asks, will this chat be archived? I uh, missed most of it. Yes. So yes. the live is available to go back. Uh, you can go back. So this is be the same for Stephen Lancaster because he came so late. Uh, you can go back and watch the whole video, and you can even see the questions in the chat that was going on with it. So yes, yes you can go back and, and see the answers. And then again, if anybody, uh, sometimes we're a bit slow with it, but we do always answer people's questions and emails, sometimes yes. very late, we know. Uh, but we it's something we like, uh, and usually I'll spend a day every week just hashing out emails for people's questions. So don't be afraid to drop us a note and uh, we'll get back to you. We, I think we really like it. Um, uh, so yeah, just do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, there was another question that we've already addressed, but have you thought about beyond the Atlantic, Pacific or other? Or other? Yes, uh, we kind of, we want to go in, into the Pacific. For now we are, like we take it one step at a time. Because uh, it's it's easy for us to say, yes, in uh, two years, we are going to take the Panama Canal and get into the Pacific. But maybe we change our mind because something else happened or we have a, an even cooler idea or we feel that we missed the med and we want to cross the Atlantic again through the Azores. That could very well happen. But uh, I would I would really like to, uh, to get into the Pacific. I think it'd be cool. You just won't see us as often because there's no internet. <laughs> yes. Yes. So. Uh, da, 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 da. I think, yeah. <laughs> I think I speak for all of us. We would like at least a live update before you take the cross the pond. Absolutely, yes. I can promise you that before we cross the Atlantic, we will be live from either the Canaries or Cape Verde. But yeah, we can totally do that. I those live sessions are awesome. They're super fun. I we really like doing them. Actually, yes. uh, I don't know if you guys like them, but we like doing them. Well, it feels like people. I would like, like to do one a tech one and only a tech one it's one of these days where we just talk tech. Uh, so if people have detailed questions, you can tune in and we could do it that way. That'd be really nice. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, that will be on the list. Okay. How expensive are the marinas on the med? It's never something that we talked about, but uh, they are pretty expensive. They can be quite expensive. The yeah. marina behind us uh, here, which is uh, pretty empty at the moment. Welcome to Malta. This is the marina behind us. Uh, <laughs> It, uh, I think it's around 80 euro a night for our size boat. We have seen, where did I tell you? There was a marina in, I can't remember where. I think it was Italy. Somewhere in Italy. It was $250 a night for our size boat. Uh, and then we've seen them down. We were at a marina a week ago. It was about 40, but it's it's at least 40 and up. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's about it. We get someone uh, couldn't figure out. This someone is your mom, by the way, Ryan. Uh, couldn't figure out how to ask a question. I think that she must be watching this live from our website and doesn't yeah. have access to the chat. Your mom is asking, when are we coming home? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, da, da, da. Walt asks, let me know about AC. I am going to try my $100 setup. An AC for a hundred dollar? I want to know about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, please, like, drop us an email. Explain to us your hundred dollar setup because I'll take AC. So, hi guys. Okay. So should we call it and again? Everyone, thanks for tuning in. If you really like, there's a big powerboat going behind us. It's very loud. It's very annoying, but it's not as annoying as, as the, the fireworks. As the explosions. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you like what we're doing with the videos, subscribe if you haven't already. I think or, most people here I think you have, have yeah. subscribed. But yes. if you have friends that love it, tell them about it, because uh, the more the merrier. And again, if you have any ideas for videos or things that you'd like to see, especially for me on the tech side, drop us a note. We'll add it to the list. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, like, thank you for being here and being part of this community. It's uh, super fun to hang out with you. I love it. This is like, ah, it gives me so much energy. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's say bye to Mike. Bye, Magic Man. Uh, bye, Walt. And bye, Anton Seed and Jules and Teddy and uh, Ryan's mom and, uh, and everybody else. I think that Sander already uh, checked out. But um, 
big hugs, big hugs from us, big hugs from Malta. Uh, if you have a dog, send send us a photo of your of your dog. We we miss we miss doggies. Thank you to Mitch for supplying his dog to uh, <laughs> to our adventure in Malta. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we uh, we will see you very soon for uh, for new adventures and uh, for a new life. One of these things. Bye bye. Bye guys.